<laughs> Glossy buttons, such as the one here, are becoming more popular in today's web and UI design. Most commonly referred to as Web 2.0 buttons or Web 2.0 style. And creating these buttons is very easy to do using Photoshop. And that's going to be the focus of today's tutorial. The tools we'll be focusing on are mainly going to be the Marquee Tool, the Gradient Tool, the Ellipse Tool, and a few commonly used tools that will go along with those. So let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a new document. So I'm going to use a 1920 by 1080 pixel document and you can name it anything you want. We're just going to go ahead and create that. Um, so now that we've got our document created, we're going to go ahead and just create a new layer right off the bat. Now you can do that by coming down here and clicking the create new layer button or you can also do control, shift, and N. And you'll get a dialog box just like this and we're just going to call this button and say OK. Now that we've got our button layer created, we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool to create a circle. So we're going to go up and choose that elliptical marquee tool right here. And now let's hold down our shift key which will give us a perfect circle as we create our circle. So there we go. So now we have a perfect circle to start with and the next thing we're going to want to do is choose our foreground and background colors for what's going to go inside the circle. Now you can use anything you like, but for this tutorial I've chosen a foreground color of 083056 and we have a background color of 126DC4. Now once we get those set, make sure we have our foreground in the foreground, background in the background. We're going to come up here and choose our gradient tool. Okay, now that we have our gradient tool selected, we're going to go up to the top of our document in the middle of the circle area and we're going to hold the shift key and drag downward to roughly the middle of the circle. Once we do that, you're going to see the gradient fill inside of our circle quite nicely and that's what we're looking for. So now we're going to go ahead and hold control and press D to deselect our circle. And we're going to go ahead and make sure we have our button layer selected. And you can either double click off the text on the button layer or right click and choose blending options. It will get you there either way. And what we're going to do is select our inner shadow. So we're going to choose inner shadow and the values we're going to select for these options are as follows. We're going to leave it on multiply. Our opacity can be anywhere from 70 to 75. I'm going to choose around 70. Our angle is going to remain at 120. We're going to use global light. Our distance will be 0. Our choke will be 0. Our size will be anywhere between 50 and 55. I'm going to go with about 51 and we can leave our contour and aliasing and all that alone for now and just go ahead and choose OK. And as you can see around the edges now we have a nice inner shadow. So the next thing we want to do is create our reflections to really make this pop. And it will really make everything come to life and you'll see when we're finished about how well this works. Okay so the next thing we want to do is choose our ellipse tool what we're going to do is create a reflective area on our button to make it really pop. So first thing, let's change our, back, our background and foreground colors just to white. We're just going to make them both white for now. And that's all F's or you can choose it with the color picker just fine. So let's go ahead and create at the top a small ellipse roughly about this size and it's going to fill with white. Now we're going to grab our selective tool and we're going to just drag it up near the top like so. And now that we've got that done, it's called ellipse 1, we're going to just right click on it and choose rasterize layer. Okay. And now that we've done that, that's near the top. 
So now that we've got our ellipse 1 up near the top, we're actually just going to lower the opacity a bit. Now, you can choose what you like, but for this tutorial, we're going to go down to roughly 35%. And as you can see, that starts to give it a reflective look at the very top, which is what we're looking for. So now we're going to create a new layer in between our button and ellipse one layer. So click on your button layer and come down here and you can choose the new layer button like I did just then. And we're just going to name it ellipse two. Now that we have our Ellipse 2 selected, we're going to go ahead and grab our Ellipse tool again. And let's come down to the bottom and we're going to make a similar ellipse, but not quite as big and a little flatter than it was before. Okay, So then we're going to center that about right here. And let's go ahead and right click on our Ellipse 2 layer and we're going to rasterize that layer also. Now the next step is we're going to add some blur to our ellipse 2 layer to give it that reflective look. So let's go up to filter, blur, and we're going to choose a nice Gaussian blur. Now like I say in all my tutorials, choose what makes you happy, what you like. But for this tutorial, we're going to set the radius to roughly 45. And go ahead and click OK. Now, what I like to do at this point is lower the opacity of this layer to our ellipse 2. And you'll see as we bring it down, it becomes more and more realistic. So let's go somewhere between 43 and 48%. I, I'm going to go nicely in the middle and say about 45%. And that gives us a nice little reflective glow in there. Okay, so the next part of the tutorial, we're going to add some blending options, but first let's go ahead and change our foreground and background colors. So for our foreground color, we're going to do F2, F2, F2. And our background color is going to be 716E6A. And she's okay. Make sure we swap those back so the foreground and background are in the right order. Alright, so now let's go over to our button layer. And again, we can right click and choose blending options or double click, whichever you're comfortable with. And we're going to select stroke. So we're going to add a nice stroke to it. Now, the options for stroke are going to be as follows. Choose whatever radius you like. You can do anywhere from 7 to 15. I prefer around a 15 on this and we're going to leave our position outside. Our blend mode is going to stay normal. Opacity is going to be about 100% and where we're going to make our changes is the fill type. Let's go ahead and change that to gradient and let's click on our gradient bar and when it comes up what we're going to want is this first here foreground to background and choose OK now for the style, we're going to leave it set to linear. We're going to leave align with layer checked. We're going to change the angle to about 90. And we're going to leave the scale at about 100. And you can see it puts a very nice little button effect around like we're looking for. So let's go ahead and choose OK. And now that we've got that done, what we actually want to do is double stroke this. but how do you do that when we've just set a stroke? Well, here's a neat little trick that you can use when you want to double stroke something. All you have to do is create a new layer and merge your previous layer with that layer and you can stroke it again quite easily. So make sure the button layer is selected. Create a new layer. So you have layer one and button. Just make sure button is selected. Hold control. Click layer one and you see they both are highlighted now. So right click on either one and say merge layers. So now they've merged into one layer with a button and you see you don't see any blending options on those anymore because we've merged them with a normal layer. Okay so now that we have our layers merged and we can add another stroke to it let's slightly change our foreground and background colors to match. So our foreground color this time is going to be B7, B9, 
C5. Okay. And our background color is going to be F5, F6, F6. Okay, and now we're going to change those back to make sure the foreground's in the foreground, background's in the background. And let's double click on our button layer and choose stroke. And again, I'm going to choose 15 on the size just to match what we had before. Position is going to stay outside, blend mode is going to stay normal, opacity to 100. We're going to change our fill type to gradient. And then we're going to choose the gradient bar. And what we're going to make sure we still have our foreground and background selected. Okay. Now for the style, we're going to change it to reflected. And we're going to reverse it. Okay. And again, we're going to need a 90 angle. And the scale can stay at 100. So now that we've done that, you see we have a nice outer reflective button. It looks like a nice beveled edge, and that's what we're looking for. All right, so we're getting actually pretty close to the end. There's just a few more things we'd like to do. We're going to enhance it by adding a drop shadow as well. So we're going to double click on the button again, go back in, and we're going to choose our shadow, which is going to be a drop shadow. So let's choose drop shadow, and then we're going to make some changes here. The opacity is going to be about 75%. Blend mode will be multiply. The angle is going to be about 120, and we can use global light. Now for the distance, we're going to want zero. The spread will be about 60, and roughly 20 on the size. And now you can change this to whatever you like, of course, but in this case, I'm using these values for my button. So we're going to go ahead and choose OK. And now our button is nice and pretty, and we've got this popping reflection and it looks nice so at this point you can really put anything you like on it it can be a play button a pause button an email button and that's what I'm going to show you now so let's go over here and go to our tools our rectangle tool ellipse in that same area and we're going to choose custom shape tool now in our custom shapes you see we've got all kinds that come with Photoshop if you don't see all these you can click this little fly out to the side and come down and look inside all these and you can click all and when it comes up just choose a pen and you'll be able to see every one in the list so for this particular one I'm going to choose the envelope to signify email so I'm just gonna go up and select the top layer I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag out this envelope okay. and I'm gonna put it in the center just like so and you can add anything you like to it you can put a drop shadow on it if you like um, you can do pretty much anything you want you can color overlay it with any color change anything you like about it customize it any way you want it because that's what it's all about and you can see making these buttons are very easy in Photoshop and this is just one example and I'll be covering some others on down the line too some on off switch buttons and some radio buttons and any any of those that you need to create a good UI or web design site so I hope you've enjoyed this fun tutorial on creating web 2.0 buttons in Photoshop if you liked our tutorial please don't forget to click the like button and we'd love to have you a subscriber as well please feel free to leave any requests or questions in the comment section below and you can follow us on Twitter at psych underscore studios or on Facebook at facebook.com slash psych studios until next time, this is Tony from Sack Studios. Take care.